Uh, so welcome back, uh, Dr. Tom McNamara here again for our course in trigonometry. The main point of this video is finding the value of the six trig functions if we are given an angle. Now notice I say here special angles. We won't be able to find the exact value given just an arbitrary angle. If you look back to the last video, what we were doing was we were taking an angle in standard position, we would find a point on the terminal side, use the coordinates of that point to figure out the value of the six trig ratios. In those examples, we actually weren't given the numerical value of an angle. So let's look at this example. the value of all six trig functions for 240 degrees. Now one thing that I should note here before we go any further, when I say special angle I mean an angle that leads us to using a special triangle. So a special angle is one that leads to using a special triangle. So we look at this angle 240 and you might say, well, how could we have a triangle with 240 degrees in it, right? The, the angle sum is 180. Here's what I mean. Let's picture 240 degrees in standard position, right? Remember, we're starting with the positive x-axis. We're rotating in the counterclockwise direction. So here we're at 90, 180. Okay, so 240 would take us into quadrant three. And I would also note that that angle right there is 60 degrees. Right, 240 degrees is 60 degrees past 180. And you'll remember that a 30, 60, 90 triangle is one of our special triangles. Okay, so we're going to incorporate that 30, 60, 90 triangle into the picture here. Now, you'll remember that we had these uh, side ratios here. We had these um, things to remember here. So the radical 3 goes next to the 30. Actually, let me redraw this picture. It'll still work, but I'll feel better if it's a little more in proportion. I should have gone more than halfway if we're going to 240. Okay, so that's 60 degrees getting to the terminal side by angle. And 60 degrees is that angle right there. That's 30 degrees. Now you'll remember from our special triangle, the side lengths were one, two and radical three. Two was the hypotenuse or longest side, one was the shortest side, and radical three was adjacent to the 30 degree angle. All right, so I can tell the coordinates of this point here. All right, look how we would get here. We go one to the left, so the x coordinate is negative one, and then we go down radical 3. So that's my y coordinate. So I got my x coordinate, I got my y coordinate, I got r. So now we can get the value of the six trig functions. Once again, when we're starting out, let's try to write out all six and let's keep them in this order, cosine theta, secant theta, sine theta, cosecant theta, And 
tangent theta, cotangent theta. Okay, now, we remember from our last video how we compute the six trig ratios given a point on the terminal side and r, the distance from that point to the origin. Cosine theta is x over r. Negative 1 over 2. Sine theta, y over r. Negative radical 3 over 2. Tan theta, y over x. The two negatives cancel out, and if I have a 1 in the denominator, I don't really need to write that. Once you've got each of these, you get these other ones for free. Okay, and this is for theta equals 240 degrees. So if you compare what we did in the last video to what we had to do in this video, in the last video we were given the coordinates of a point on the terminal side. What we had to do is find r using the Pythagorean theorem, and then we could figure out the six trig ratios. In this scenario, we were given the angle. Okay, we draw that angle in standard position. If they're asking me to find the trig ratios for an angle, it's probably going to be something that leads to a special triangle in the picture like this. Now, when you're making your special triangle, always go to the closest part of the x-axis. Okay, don't go to the y-axis. In other words, don't do that. You'll, you'll have everything backwards. Okay, you want to go to the closest part of the x-axis to draw in your special triangle. And then, use what you remember about your special triangles. You're going to have to memorize those special triangles, your 45, 45, 90 triangle, and your 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we've got a 60 degree angle right there. That side length is 1. Hypotenuse is 2. Side adjacent to the 30 is radical 3. Don't forget the coordinates are going to have signs on them, S-I-G-N-S, -S, signs. If you're going to the left, your x coordinate is going to be negative. If you're going down, your y-coordinate is going to be negative. In this case, we went left and down, so they're both negative. That is going to affect the values of these trig functions. Cosine, x over r, y over r, y over x, okay? We need to have the signs correct to do this. Okay, how about we try one more? Find the values of the six trig functions for 315 degrees. So once again, they're asking me about the values of the trig functions for a specific angle. I'm thinking, how can I work in one of my special triangles on this? Okay, 315. Okay, starting here, positive x-axis, 90, 180, 270. If I went all the way, it'd be 360. So 315 is putting me here in the fourth quadrant. When I'm making my triangle, I gotta think about going to the closest portion of the x-axis. I'm always going to the x-axis. Now. If this is 315 degrees, that's 45 degrees. And there's 45 degrees left to get back to that full 360 rotation, getting us back to the starting point. So we're going to throw in a special triangle right here. It's a 45, that's a 45. 1, 1, and radical 2. The hypotenuse is radical 2. 
Once again, actually write down your coordinates here and pay attention to the signs, once again, S-I-G-N-S -S signs that we need. Okay, if I want to get to this point in the XY plane, it's going one unit to the right, the X coordinate is positive, one unit down, so the Y coordinate is negative. Okay. Cosine 315 degrees, sine 315 degrees, tangent 315 degrees, okay, cosine, y over r, 1 over radical 2, sine, cosine, x over r, cosine is x over r, sine, y over r, negative 1 over radical 2, tangent, y over x, negative 1 over 1. Let's do the other ones here. Secant 315. If you know the cosine, you automatically know the secant. Take the reciprocal. If you know the sine, then you automatically know the cosecant. If you know the tangent, then you automatically know the cotangent. Reciprocal of negative 1 is also negative 1. You notice I left a little space right there. Depends on the textbook you're using. Sometimes authors will rationalize the denominator. Not hugely important, but you should know what it's about just in case you see it in a textbook. Used to be considered bad form to have a square root in your denominator. I want to get rid of radical 2. I, want, I don't want to have a radical there anymore, so I hit it with a radical 2. Now, if I just hit the denominator, with a factor that would change the value of the fraction. So I got to do the same thing top and bottom. Radical 2 times radical 2 is 2. So 1 over radical 2 is equivalent to radical 2 over 2. Some authors will write that this way. So they might say this. Okay, so just in case you see that, you know where it comes from, rationalizing the denominator. Okay, so, you got two ways to find the value of the six trig functions. One, I could give you the coordinates of a point on the terminal side of the angle, give you the x and y coordinates. Two, I could actually give you an angle. And if I do that, it's probably going to lead to using one of the special triangles. And then you can use what we know about the sides of those special triangles to get the x and y coordinate. And if you got a special triangle, you've automatically got r because you got the hypotenuse. And then you can go and find the value of the six trig functions that way.